Hey guys, this is Josh with the Depth Tape channel, and in this video, we're going to be doing course three in our Diesel Engine 101 course series here. Okay, so in our last video, we talked about the valve train and basically how air gets in and out of the cylinders, and that's a very complicated system. In this video, we're going to be focusing on one single component, and this single component is, I would consider it the most critical component in the engine, and that's because this is the only component that is absorbing all of the energy and sending it out of the engine and basically if it breaks nothing else in the engine works now everything in the engine is critical but this is the only piece that bolts to either your transmission or whatever it's driving to output all this work the engine's making into whatever implement whether that's turning your wheels or turning some piece of farm equipment or whatever hydraulic pump this is what does it and if you don't know what i'm talking about we're going to be talking about the crankshaft today now, if you've never seen a crankshaft, I'll be showing you some pictures of some here. They're very weird looking metal components. And basically, the reason they have the name crankshaft is because if you've ever seen any sort of crank, anything you have to hand turn, there's a pivot point, and then there's some sort of leveraged area away from that pivot point where you rotate something. I used to have an old tractor when I lived out in the country in the back we'll just say a few years ago, and uh, it had a crank start on it. Now, it had an electric start, but it also had a crank start, and that was just, that blew my mind. It's also very dangerous, but uh, they didn't really care about safety as much back in the uh, 1940s and 50s on tractors back then, but I never got hard operating it. Anyway, so the reason it's named a crankshaft is because the connecting rod, which we've discussed before, which connects the piston to the crankshaft is connected the connecting rod is connected to the crankshaft and the piston on the crank throw now you need to understand how basically a crankshaft works so i'm going to go over this little short crappy animation that i just made so here's the amazing animation that i made i know i should be working at pixar here and the blue is the piston the gray is the connecting rod and the black is the crankshaft so the center section where the throw is pivoting around is called your main journal on the crankshaft. And then you have your crank throw, which is where your connecting rod connects to. So that's basically what the crankshaft is doing, is it is forcing the connecting rod, which is forcing the piston, up and down in the cylinder. So you basically can see how the crankshaft works, at least in relation to the engine how it has a pivot point, how the connecting rod rotates around it on the crank throw. Now, even though it's one piece, it has actually a couple different components in it. Um, now, these aren't parts that really bolt on, although some of them are bolt on. They're separate, like on a 3500 series cat, the counterweights. So a crank has basically your main journals, which are where the crank is actually held into the engine block. These There's what they call main caps and they hold the crankshaft in place and those are on the pivot point on the center section then of course you have your crank throws that's where the connecting rods go and that's where the little armatures are offset and they rotate around the center section which is your main journals and then you have basically what they call counterweights because the crankshaft with the crank shows getting away from the center point of the crank it needs something to balance it if you've ever had a crankshaft sitting in an engine with no connecting rods or anything connected to it and the it's the mains are bolted in you can typically rotate it fairly easy because it's generally very well balanced if it wasn't as the engine rpm increased it could cause a lot of balance issues and potentially break the crankshaft which we don't want to do so those are basically the three components of the crankshaft how it works now we need to talk about some math. It's not algebra, it's not geometry, it's not trigonometry, it's just basic math and how the crankshaft affects basically the entire engine. Okay, so you might be wondering like, well, it's just a crankshaft, it just, it's just a part that sits there and the pistons basically force it up and down. Well, the crank determines how the pistons act. And what I mean by that is the distance between the main and the crank throw where the connecting rod bolts to determines a lot on the engine and what i mean by this is your displacement in your engine which if you've never heard that term before if you say hey i have a c15 well that's a 15 
depending on what version you have. If you have like a, a compound turbo, the, the C15s with two turbos, that's a 15.2 liter engine. Now, what are they talking about 15.2 liters? That means the area of your cylinder, that means basically this area where the piston sits times the length of the stroke is a volume measurement. You could say at the bottom of the piston being in the bottom of the cylinder, you have an area here. And if you multiply that, that volume times the amount of cylinders gives you the displacement of the engine. So if you had a six liter engine and it was a six cylinder engine, that would mean each cylinder with the piston at the bottom of its stroke was one liter, six times one, six liters. So the stroke length is determined strictly by the crankshaft because you remember the crank throw is never going to change. It just rotates, which forces the piston to go up and down. So that determines basically if what type of engine you have. Do you have a what they call a square engine, meaning the stroke and the bore size are relatively the same? You can have something called a stroker engine, which some diesels i'd say most diesels are where you have a longer stroke than you do a bore this also determines the rpm range because if you have a very short stroke but a very big bore in order to make a lot of power you'd have to rev the engine up very high because you're only moving the piston down a very small amount however if the piston's moving a large amount you'd typically be a much slower turning over engine, so you'd run at a lower RPM. All that's determined and engineered by the crankshaft itself. Okay, so we know basically how the crankshaft works, how it, the function of it, uh, the, the arithmetic that goes into how the crankshaft affects the engine. What we need to know, though, is if you think about it, this is rotating all the time. I'm going to tell you something, though, and when you first hear it, you're... You're going to say that's not true. So this heavy component, it can weigh a couple hundred pounds, is in the engine. It's rotating all the time. It's not actually touching the other parts of the engine, though. It's not touching the engine block. It's not touching the connecting rods. The only thing it's really bolted to would be there's a, a harmonic damper in the front of the engine to help absorb vibrations. This can either be a rubber coated um, or some sort of viscous uh, internal dampening uh, device. And it's called a, I used to always call it a dampener, and almost everyone calls it that. But if you ever look it up, it's actually called a damper. Damper, not dampener. Even though it's a harmonic dampener, it's a damper. Anyways, and then on the back side, you'll have either a flex plate if you have an automatic transmission or a flywheel, which is a heavy steel piece that the clutch bolts do. Those are actually touching the crankshaft. Now, getting back to what I said, the crankshaft's not actually touching anything. You might be like, well, that... what do you mean it's not touching it? You just told me it was bolted into the engine with the mains. Well, that's... The mains are holding it there, but they're not touching it. And what I mean by that is engines use what they call a journal bearing system. This is a... This is actually an upper main bearing out of a cat diesel engine and this is actually a connecting rod bearing and these are sets so you'd have two of these that would go around your crank journal that'd be your connecting rod journal and this would be your main journal and what those actually do is they have oil that's pumped into them by the oil pump. Now, I'm not going to go into the elaborate system of the oil system. We're going to be talking about that in the next class. But there's a light film, a couple thousandths of oil between the crankshaft and all these bearing journals at all times. So really, the crankshaft is not actually touching any part of the engine. It's actually floating on a very thin pillow of oil at all times. And that keeps it able to rotate with almost zero friction. So you may have noticed that some of the, or well, all these classes have been like 20, 25 minutes long. I'm going to cut my videos and try to keep them less than 10 minutes. Average view, view duration on my channel is four to five minutes. Now, of course, that's probably a lot of people watching a couple minutes and then clicking off and then a lot of people watching the whole thing. 
so it averages out but it's hard to keep someone's attention for that long so instead of covering like in the last video i did the valves the valve train the camshaft all these different items i'm like in this one i'm just going to focus on the crankshaft next one i'm going to try and focus on the oil system and how it operates make them shorter hopefully keep your guys interest and hopefully help me make more videos all right thanks for watching